G'day, North fans. Welcome to another episode of Get Around Me with Nathan Grime and Nani. How are you going? I'm well, hey. Good, uh, good to be back and uh, good to see you. What are the, I'm not sure what those headphones are you're running, but uh, that's carry on. But uh, I'm, I'm trying something you, different. Man. Mate, without further ado, we can see a special guest that you've um, gotten around you, if that's a term. Can you introduce... Yep. Yep, so yeah, getting around me today, we've, uh, we've delved into a bloke that was drafted in 2006, uh, number three draft pick, one of the funniest blokes, if not the funniest bloke I've played with. Um, <laughs> he's a great family man now, uh, there's plenty of funny stories about this bloke, but yeah, the bloke we've got to get around us today is, uh, is Lockie Hance, and uh, Hannes, how are you buddy? Yeah, no, I'm good mate, good to see you again, been a while. Lockie, you, look, you look wonderful. Mate, I'm, I'm just looking at myself here, I do look alright. You look brilliant. Your hair is really good. Yes, I'm growing my hair. I'm growing my beard out. Yeah. Um, and I'm actually looking all right. So I'm pretty happy with the Zoom so far. You, you never had like you've got a bit of a hard edge about you, actually. So. Um, yeah, and the workforce now. So you've got to have a bit of a hard edge about you. So. Yeah. yeah. With, with yeah, you and me holding up the back lawn, that was a really tough edge. So back in the day, the effort of me to get Barry Hall off uh, Turbo Thompson will go down in history. It's the biggest cowardly thing of all time. Yeah. Well, <laughs> L- Lockie, you didn't have hair like that at North, I don't reckon. It looks so lush. Like at no, North, was... I had a, a bit of a buffon early days before you got there. Yep. No, I don't even reckon Nani saw it. I was there before the year before him. But I'm trying to grow it out, and it's it's more it's straightened now. Like now it's just yeah. Real, I remember it no being way. kind of curlier no when you were younger. It looks it used to be. It was heaps curly. I used to get a perm, but now <laughs> um, it's just normal, just growth. It looks good. So you've joined so, us off a uh, fresh day of work. What, what are you up to these days? No, I'm the Mo Man now, like full time. Legit. Legit the best thing ever. It's the best job ever. Why? Ever. Um, no, I bought a gardening business out. I've moved out to Sticks. I'm out in um, Bunyip. So um, I thought, what can I do out here? And I love mowing the lawns and, shit and stuff. That, you can say uh, that. Um, okay. Um, yeah, so I just bought a garden business out here and now I just run around mowing lawns, trimming hedges, doing a bit of D, you know, anything you need, pull down a deck, build a deck. I know really? what I'm doing. But, um, no, <laughs> but, um, hey, what's that? Uh, what's uh, is it? You still as a mowing man or what's your business? We like to get nah, it. Uh, I've got it through a, a franchise, VIP. So, um, oh, VIP. Oh, yeah. anyone, wants, anyone wants their lawns done, just log on to VIP and uh, ask for Hannah's. You'll, uh, yeah, you'll get yeah. it. Have, any, have you ever had any of the boys from the club do a day's work or help out? I actually had, um, I had Sputter work with me the other day. He, um, wow. Obviously, he's, yeah, it's been a tough time for the moment. He, he uh, reached out because we're only around the corner. Uh, he's out in Berwick, I think. So he came work with me for the day and he only lasted two and a half hours. So, um, what happened? No, nah, it was a bit of hard work for him. He's got his... Um, <laughs> He's got his, uh, I don't know what he used to do, real estate or whatever. He's got real estate hands and a uh, couple of hours on the job, mowing lawns and he was done. So I had to drop him off home at about 11.30. So he literally pulled the piano back his pay? <laughs> nah, I didn't give him nothing because I was like, mate, you've got to work the eight hours. And he stopped at two and a half. What did he say, yeah, Lockie? Right. Did he just say, oh, this is not for me? Yeah, he just said, oh, I need to go home. No, he made an excuse about his mate Jones. He needed to rip up some concrete or something. There was no trucks or concrete in his house and I dropped them off. So I said, Mate, that's mate Jones, he reeks off. <laughs> yeah, I said, that's a lie. Just, yeah. Yeah, he's, got, um, yeah, he's got office hands. He just couldn't get, he couldn't do it. So, hey, yeah. lucky uh, Nani, I, I just sense that there's probably going to be a little bit of conflict in this chat here. Because um, you guys are sort of like professionally like your enemies. I mean, you used to be teammates, but now you're enemies because you're cutting real grass right and nani's laying fake grass so he's taking work off you lucky has he ever taken no, no, work no, no, no. i've got i've got some work for him because today actually legit like two hours ago i was mowing a new lady's lawn out in um officer and she had half a little bit of fake turf and i, I remember you i remember i was going to talk to you today and i was thought oh, no, i'll be able to get that and I won't touch the fake grass, but I went way oh, too close, and I've chopped up half of fake grass. And I <laughs> took it off. And I was like, "Oh no, what have I done?" And I was like, oh, "What do I say?" Because I'm only charging like fifty bucks. I'm like, "I've just caused about two hundred bucks worth of damage here." <laughs> but I was like, "Yeah, don't worry about it. I've got a um, I've got a mate that has fake grass, so she come out the office." So, 
It's probably a, it's probably more than two hundred dollar job. I have ripped it to shreds. So, hey, Nani, uh, yeah. I couldn't believe it. Nani, have you ever um, have you ever taken work off Lockie before? Well, <laughs> not really. <laughs> yeah. I, I was funny, like I actually um, I was explaining to her that uh, how I the only reason I got my first game was because you did your hamstring in round five, 2009. I was actually doing a bit of research and I'm not really that good on this soon, but I just got up your Wikipedia page and don't tell you on this, but I've actually updated my own Wikipedia page. But um, <laughs> I'll share a screen with you, mate. This is your Wikipedia page. Where is it? Uh, there's your, uh, just bear with me, mate. This is a wrong right. tab. That's your, that's your great speech. But if you just look in this bit here, I actually somehow get a mention. <laughs> The old battling rookie from Tassie. During the absence, Nathan Grimes amended his spot in the team and upon return, Hanson had to play forward. <laughs> and I reckon that's always been... That I cost me 150 pounds, though. <laughs> I'd have 300 under my belt if I stayed back my whole bloody career. But thanks, mate. No, I look when you, that, when you did the um, I'll be honest, I got in my sister's Astra, which I used to drive at the time, was heading home and I was fist pumping the whole way. And I'm thinking, this is my But like, it's a competitive industry. Um, and, you know, I've got to thank you, Locke. I would never have got a game otherwise. And I'd probably no, 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 no. fake grass. <laughs> Just fix up that fake turf. Off. So, um, <laughs> and we'll call it even. No, no, it was funny. I, I mentioned to... Uh, this, I'm not much of a good interviewer as such, so this will jump between timelines. But I was telling Heath before that um, we did have a bit of a confrontation one time. I'm not sure if you remember this, but um, I think I was injured at the time and you might oh, have had a... Can we ask Lockie if he does remember any confrontation uh, between you two before you tell the story? Lockie, do you remember a conf confrontation with Nani at all? In a match review. Oh. I'll remember it once you say it and then I'll... Um... <laughs> I'll so you're such, a, you're such a good bloke, Lucky. You've already let it go. You've already forgotten. You don't, you don't hold grudges. If it was, if it was, yeah, um, no, I'll, I'll remember it. So uh, at this stage, I think it was about round 7, 2011. We must have played Adelaide over there. And I was injured at the time, not surprisingly. And it was an effort that, like, it might have just looked bad on camera. I don't know. But it looked like it could, could have went a bit harder. Right? <laughs> <laughs> I got, no, this, this is the truth, Lock. This How do you shut Zoom? How do you shut Zoom? No, 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 no. no. Um, um, and we have an, un an unnamed coach said to me, um, Nani. <laughs> unnamed, unnamed coach. We don't, we don't do that, Nani. Uh, uh, Brad Scott <laughs> said to me, Nani, Nani, um, when I show you this clip of Lockie, can you, can you just let him know the effort wasn't good enough? And at the time, I thought I was a chance for the leadership group. As it turned out, I didn't get it. <laughs> What you know? So the clip come up, and it wasn't even that bad. And is this in a I team meeting? Thought, is this in a, yeah, like, in a every, everyone's? No, I think I remember it now, and you had to say it was bad. Or... Yeah, and like I just sat there like a true coward, and um, and like I could just saw hear Brad like go <clears throat> in front of the room. And he's like, I said, and oh yeah. Like, what are you going to say, mate? Yeah. Oh, I like, oh, so I looked oh. around and I balled him, and I balled him like a, an absolute trooper, and I said, um. Hey, like, I couldn't do much better myself here, mate. And then Brad's like, don't sugarcoat it. <laughs> and I was just like, it was like I was a mix between Stevens and Archer. Like, I was the toughest bloke here. But I said, Lockie, oh, that's yeah. me. That's like, a playing that... date, week. So I was like, oh, this <laughs> bastard. Sorry, that's me. Well, 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 Lockie, that's week as piss. And I just sucked back down in my chair like the biggest coward of all time. <laughs> I was anyway, like, I'm glad this meeting only goes for another 10 minutes. And we'll see what happens. And nothing yeah. happened after it. And then... Scared. You come up to me at Mad Monday that year. I think it was about day three of Mad Monday. And um, you're like, I've got to talk to you about stuff. And I'm thinking, oh, this will be good. <laughs> and you're like, mate, I... uh, and you go, in round mate. seven when you clip me, mate, that's bullshit. Like that. <laughs> <laughs> and so I had to... Body. Bloody hell. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Mo, man. No, no. We've forgotten about it now until you brought it back up. So <laughs> next time in that mode, I'll be... I didn't get any votes in the leadership group and lost a friend. So it was worth it. <laughs> um, so, not, hey, Lockie, do you, do you remember what's your side of that story? Can you tell us what you remember? Oh, obviously, I would have gone hard enough. Scotty was just having, you know, one of those things. You had to tell off someone. So I was bloody, I was the one that was copping it. 
And Nani would have bloody sided with Scotty, uh, as usual. <laughs> <laughs> I was going for the coach. I've right, been injured for his bloody six, last six weeks, but I played every week. And it was one effort, but couldn't oh, Come on. Um, do but no, I don't forget, I don't forget anything. Yeah, and after a couple of beers, and then I would have been like, ready? Now I'm tough as hell. Let's go. Me and you. Yeah. Isolation stops. I'll be making a drive out of Adelaide. And, Checking out a or whatever. Is that what yeah, you're coaching? You and the family are welcome uh, any time, mate. You know that. But um, just um, we've got to mix this chat with a bit of serious stuff and all the fun stuff. Because for the 90% of people that like the fun stuff, you've got the 10% that want to know the ins and outs of a footy career, which is fine. So this is a hard one to start with. You're just talking about the scrutiny around that effort in particular. But, you know, I was lucky enough to come in, I guess, as a rookie. You were chat as a pick three. How, how was it like with the... This is a serious question. I don't ask many serious questions. Tell, tell us what it's like with the actual pressure <laughs> as an under-18 kid straight out of school, pick three, to a club that's never had a lot of high picks. Like, how was the pressure at, at your, during your time at North and did it take a toll on, you know, on your mental state at all? Well, you can probably tell I'm a pretty laid-back character. Um, yep. And I'm just, I was a pretty young 18-year-old when I got drafted, so... Um, when I got to Melbourne, I didn't really care about anything. But, um, you know, if you're not... I only played two games, I think, in my first year. Um, the first couple. And then, yeah, you, you see other blokes that got drafted the same year playing every week. And, um, you know, I remember, I think it was back when Simo had a bit of a bloody go at me for, you know, not trying me hardest or um, caring enough about footy back then. So... Um, it does take its toll, but all I could do was try and buddy play footy and try and yep. get a kick and um, try and just put out everything else that was going on. Um, but, you know, it, it does take its toll, but um, I got there in the end, played a few games. After it took a while, I think I didn't play, I don't know, like two games in my first year and then I didn't play until like around 13 or 14 in the next year. So there was a bit of a gap. And then um, I had a little bit of a run on and played a few games after that. So um, obviously I would have liked to have played 200 games like everyone would have liked to have played. But um, I think I forged out, you know, an OK career that I could do and played for 11 years. So Lucky, you absolutely did, mate. You, um, well, you got to 151 games, I think. and. But you, at, at the period cheap there, you, sorry, say that again. A little bit of a cheap one at the end there, but it was good. Oh, no, mate, there's no, there's no cheap ones. Um, but you, at one point, and Nani, you'll attest to this, so you were the, one of the game's best um, intercept marks down back. Like, you, you had <laughs> a mate, yeah, look at them, look at them. You had an amazing we're good. Game. Once I figured out what Grippo was in, like, 2011, I think, that was the best thing ever. My hands were sticky out for about four or five years. <laughs> then it kind of wore off. And after that, I was like, God damn it. I couldn't like anything after that. But one, one thing I'll say, hey, and this yeah. is Lockie and other players, is you get a lot of those players that I call them a bit of coaches, suck old pets. That like They do the extra tram tracks. They do the ice bars. They do all this stuff. And everyone has this perception that the game means so much to them and that they're great leaders. But if you go and watch Lockie run or train, he does it with a smile on his face, but I can honestly say there's not many guys that put in or actually care more. If Lockie has a bad game, he's not sitting in the change rooms laughing about having a bad game. It's just because he's got a perception or, or a personality where, hey, it's good, he's important and he's a competitor, which is a big competitor, but he's not a suck hole. And, and his, his reputation then becomes someone that, that doesn't care. But when you play with him week in, week out, mate, when, when he has a bad game like anyone else, he's filthy. Um, and... I think, like, as a media department, like, it was good because blokes like Lockie and I are happy to have a joke, but then supporters see it as don't care, but it's, I don't mm. know if I'm talking the right thing there, like, but actually, sometimes yeah. guys... No, it is, yeah. Okay. yeah more than that's that's that. But, yeah, once you get that perception of not caring, you can't get it back, or you try your hardest or whatever. But um, everyone's going to always think you're just a laid-back kid and you don't give a hell what's going on, but... Dude, Dan, you do, but... Yeah, um, you could try hardest to prove it or whatever, but um, everyone else, uh, supporters or whatever, um, they're always going to have that perception of you. And um, I don't really care what anyone thinks, so really. Um, but um, 
yeah, it was, yeah, it's hard to try and show that you can't, if you're a funny fellow or you like to have a laugh and then if you have a game, oh, you still want to have a little bit of a laugh or whatever. But we used to back in, um, you weren't playing back then, but we used to play in Tassie in our first year. And far out, we lost by 100 points every week, every week. And yeah. uh, I remember me and Nary Warren, like Benny Warren, We'd have a rock off after the bloody the game. We lost by 100 points. We'd have a rock off to see if you could sit in the front seat to get on the car on the way home. Far out. No, I've never seen more backlash after having a bloody rock off after a bloody, um, just for a front seat. From who? Oh my God. Like we had a rock off. We just lost by 100. Like we, the game was over. We had a shower, had the meeting, whatever. And we're waiting out in the front of the rooms to go home. Oh, get in the car to go to the airport or whatever. So me and Nari had a rock off to see sit in the front because there was like six of us. Um, and obviously one of the Tassie boys had seen it. And then he told Kreza. Who's who was Kreza? Darren Kreswell? Uh, Darren Kreswell. You don't want to know who Kreswell was. Uh -oh. yeah, is, he, is he watching? <laughs> no, he was just the coach and he was crazy, man. Um, <laughs> but... Um, we rocked up on Monday morning and it was like Lockie and Benny Warren meet me in the office at buddy 8.30 or whatever. It was Donald McDonald, I think he was the buddy, you know, the big dog back then. And far out, we just got ripped to shreds for about an hour about not caring, not buddy like caring that we lost by 100 points, like show, like mucking around, blah, blah, blah. And I was sitting there going, what the hell? They like one rock off. The seat was in the front seat and I was just like, this is the footy world. Far out. This is yeah. crazy. Hey, um, yeah, that was a memory of the back in Tassie. With, with the Tassie stuff, like, so for people that wouldn't remember, and that was the year before I got there, um, when we had a dual alignment, and our boys travelled to Tassie at the time. But I remember, it, I think it was at Benny Warren's 21st speech, and it was one of the great speeches of all time. But you told a few other stories. About, years in and then like, yeah. You told a couple of other stories. Was there any other stories that you can remember from that year to give people an idea what 18 year olds are like traveling to Tassie? Was there a three quarter time speech when you're actually up <laughs> one day? Oh, hold on. I just got to lock the door because the kids are going home. Hold on, mate. I just got to lock the door so they can't get in. Yeah. There's about <laughs> eight kids there. <laughs> and the kids coming in now. Yeah. Uh, they're walking in, though. Was that one at three quarter uh, time when you yeah, actually played? Yeah, oh, far out. We had some sprays. But there was a time, I think we were playing, I think it was the, uh, I think it was the Bull Ants. We were playing the Bull Ants, I think it was three quarter time. And for a change, we were actually up. We were probably up by like four or five goals, I think. Um, and Chris has come walking out, like Chris and Darcy. But like, we we're actually winning, so I'm like, this guy's going to bloody praise us. And holy hell, like, he has ripped every bloke in the 22 block. All of us just going around going, how does your, and you're this, you're that, you're that, that. Ripped everyone, like spraying people in the crowd, I reckon, like, you know, family members are around the house. Spraying us all. We end up losing about 10 goals. <laughs> we got a 15 goal turnaround after that. I was just like, what the hell? This is, this is mad now, bro. Oh, yeah, man. But that was, that was the likes of Tassie days. Far out. We played yeah. it every week. You lived down there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, was, no, I actually liked playing Tassie. I just didn't like playing for the Devils. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. But, you know, um, no, it was full on. No, it was uh, an experience. Uh, I opened up first up first year. So. Yeah. And... In that team, you would have played with Rossi, uh, um, uh, uh, Goldie, and people wouldn't even remember this back then. Like, even as good as Goldie's become, he's become probably the best ruckman in the history of the club. But even when he was scratching around down there, he, he used to turn up late to a few meetings. And remember, he got sent back to Werribee at one stage for a month and was not allowed inside the club when we were there. Like, he couldn't get anywhere. One of his things, um, um, you know, what it seems like it, everyone starts out with a tough, tough time at the start. I know this is not about Goldie, but um, his hair was all like bed, head ruffled up, and you know, and you can tell the bloke's just got out of bed. But he was trying to say that his car broke down, but he actually had it in, didn't have it in park when he was trying to start it. So, oh. <laughs> and then he changed his tune, and he was trying to say he had to drop a letter off to his solicitor, but it, 
He was saying he had to drop a lettuce off to his sister. <laughs> and, uh, we're like, did you just have to drop a lettuce off to your sister? <laughs> like, yeah. Yeah. You're not back at the club for a month. We don't want to see you. <laughs> Shit, when he came back, far he was a different person. He was shredded, had a bald head, and then I was just like, this bloke. Oh, and then he turned into a gun. It was like, we wouldn't carry his bags now. Um, oh, I'm waiting to carry his bags. I'm uh, what have I got in there? Early, early days lock. Um, as you'd remember, there was a group of us that lived um, in Edgewater, become a bit of the Edgewater crew. And just to give an idea, just to pause an idea, within an 80 metre radius, there was Riggio, Lower, Hanson, Torito, McIntosh, myself, Obbs, Urquhart and Greenwood. Like, I don't know who thought that would be a good idea, but what, what's your memories from early career, you know, living with mates and off field and, and what it used to be like compared to the professionalism? At the back end, oh, yeah. Early days was so much different to now. Like, like I remember going to recovery early days, and if you didn't rock up in your jeans and your shirt that you were going out the night before, and like you got laughed at, you're like, "What are you doing here?" And your buddy speed up. <laughs> like legit, you would rock up in your. Remember, you wore a travesty shirt or something like back then, like, <laughs> with raspberry, raspberry stains on it from the. Yeah, and your big buddy, yeah, your jeans with your buddy, um, like, tiger prints at the front, like the scratches. Yeah, I remember that. Like, you'd rock out and like, I'm a big dog, and everyone loved it. Now, yeah, if you rocked up and you weren't there half an hour early, yeah, and um, in your full speedo kit, yeah, in North Melbourne, you would be banished away. But back in the day, yeah, and I remember I lived with um. Yeah, with Ed Lower and Riggs. Um, I remember just yeah, around the corner in Ober and Levi, and yeah. the time the cops rocked up. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't even know the reason why they rocked. They're all hiding in the cupboard. Like, oh, the cops are coming. So we all like hid in the cupboard. <laughs> I was like, well, that, that was back in the day, you could do. Uh, now, can't even have a beer with our buddy getting drunk. Yeah. I remember um, that day we all got together and said, listen, boys, like, no one say anything. Like, they'll never know. <laughs> and when we got there, legs are storming out of the eye. We're like, you, you, Grimer, Edwards, Hanson. Like, and we're like, oh, we're, we're in a lot of trouble here. <laughs> yeah. He said to me, like, if the NFL PA would let me, I'd sack you. <laughs> I, was like, oh, come on. I went home and slept in the fetal for about eight days. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Hey, lucky, lucky. We at him. <laughs> <laughs> did you ever have any almighty sprays from Dean Laidley or Brad Scott that you remember, or several? I've got a top fifty. I've got a top fifty. <laughs> well, that's how many I've caught. But no, I had some doozies. I had some doozies. Um, my best one was from Creza, but that's that was that's. You can't say that on Zoom. I don't think I'm allowed to say that on Zoom. Can you Scotty gave a Hey. Can you say it, hey? Can I say it? Can, you, well, can uh, we beep it out? You can say it. Oh, we can bleep it out. We'll bleep yeah, it we, out. Uh, it was half time. Well, I don't know who we were playing, but we were down by 10 goals or whatever. <laughs> and then Chris just comes in and just makes a beeline for me. <laughs> I'm just like, oh, here we go. Here we bring, give it, give it to me. So it's half time, and then we're expected to go back out and try and keep playing. Oh my God. He's just come over and going, Oi, Lockie, you, you weak, you can think of what he's called me, weak something, something. <laughs> all you do is get on a plane, come over here and think, you know, it's all um, flowers and roses, and you know, come over here. You don't give up. About, has he? I was like, I don't really care about Taddy because I don't come from Taddy, but I was like, yeah, 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 yeah. And he just kept going. I'm just there going, like, oh, can somebody cop it at least? How long does this half time go for? Like, 15 minutes. He sprayed me for 15 minutes. And I'm like, looking around, going, there's 22 of us in here. I've caught the whole thing. So then we're like, then it stopped. We have to go back out. And I couldn't even stand up. I was just like, fuck oh, yeah. So I've just copped it and was shaking like this. Then went back out there, didn't touch the ball for the rest of the game. <laughs> and we ended up losing about 300. And I was just like, <laughs> what happened? I was like, I didn't even, I must have been going bad, but was I going 15 minutes of just continual spraying? I was like, oh, yeah. But no, that was good times, man. So, 
you and Chris, they don't catch up then, I imagine. Oh, nah. I sent him a Christmas card, but he didn't reply. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. What, <laughs> what was your relationship like with Lades and, and Scotty? Oh, uh, well, Lades gave me the chance. So I got along with Lades. I don't have, I've been knocked out a few times, so I don't have the best memory of them. But, um, Lades did give me a go, and um, <laughs> got another funny story about Lays, but I won't say that. <laughs> yeah, tell the story. Tell the story. Tell the story. No, but Lays did give me a give me the chance, and um, I remember one time with Lays, we were playing. I think we, I don't know what year it was, but I don't know if you were playing that when we played the final against Sydney. Not the not when Lays was coach. Nah, nah, nah. Oh, okay. Was that early, like 2000? Yeah, that, that was our, that was our. Yeah, all right. Yeah. And I played like the last ten games, and then we got to the final, and we're playing at that um, not the SCG one. Oh, it. And it rained all day, and I'm like, ooh, this is like I was the king of getting dropped when it was raining. <laughs> if it was, if it was a hint of humidity, it ooh, and it's see, mate. I normally, I normally got told like, like a few hours before. But like the first final we're playing, I'm like, how good is this? And I remember Rossi and Gav, like, you remember those fellas, were giving it to me all day going like, one of you, you're, you're dropped, mate. You are dropped. I'm coming in for you. Because Gav was emergency. And I was like, man, I would have got told by now. Like, relax, it's not even raining. So it was literally like 40 minutes before the game. Kitted up, like full kit, like ready to go. We're, walk, like, we're out on the ground, and then I just see Lades make a beeline for me, and I'm like in the back pocket doing some backline stuff. And he's just making a massive beeline for me. I'm like, nah, not today, mate. <laughs> so I run around the other end, and I started doing drills with the forwards, and he's come followed me. <laughs> and I'm like, oh my God, he's going to drop me. That's like 30 minutes before the bounce. And he bloody dropped me before the bounce. <laughs> We're going to go with Gav. It's a bit wet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, thanks, Gav. Awesome. He didn't get a kick, so I was like, hmm. <laughs> and we lost, and I was like, hmm. Bad luck, lads. No, but, oh, I was filthy on that one. What about yeah. Scotty, Lucky? How would you go with Scotty? Um, yeah, not bad. Not bad. <laughs> and, um, oh. I don't know why I said it like that, but I did. <laughs> <laughs> no, nah, he, he was a fan of me. So, um, well, we obviously had some good times and some bad times. So. Um, he was good. Like, that's fine. I didn't like it, but he, but he gave it to me. But um, I think coaches just pick and choose who they could spray. And I was obviously one that didn't take it. I wasn't <laughs> going to take the heart. But if you sprayed someone like, I don't know, who took it to heart if you sprayed it? And then like, God, I can't bloody play for the next 10 weeks. I'm like, yeah, yeah. Um, I could cop it and then still try and play the next week. So, um, but no, Scotty was, was good. And um, he played me for six, seven years or whatever it was. So. Yeah. I think, I think with that, uh, Heath, as well, to jump in, that like everyone that gets their opportunity, so we both start under Lades. Like, we'll forever love Lades. We didn't have a lot to do with him because we were kids. Mm-hmm. Coaches, players want the coach to talk to them 24-7 now, be their best mate. If Lades patted you on the head after a game, or, you know, so that was enough. I don't know if it was the same for you, Like, like You didn't need to be having coffee with them twice a week to know they connected. I loved Brad. You know, he didn't make the invite list to my wedding, but he was, on, he was there about. <laughs> but, like, <laughs> if he walked into the lunchroom, I didn't really want to sit and eat lunch with Brad, not because I didn't like him, because I had 40 other mates I wanted to eat lunch yeah, with him. You know what I mean? Like, it doesn't mean that you need to be their best friend. And, like, yeah, Brad gave Lockie an opportunity for eight or nine years. I, same with myself. It's funny, though, when you get booted out the other end, you naturally hate the coach because okay. they booed you, but then you forget all the good things they've done for you for nine or ten years. And I think what this sort of Zoom podcast has done with everyone we're speaking to is, firstly, they all still love the club because they gave an opportunity. And we all still love our coaches and our staff. It's just with our best stories are generally shit canning people at the club. <laughs> because they, 
Are we going to have fun? They're not funny. They can't come on here and tell 10 really good stories about, you know, Brad Scott texted me the other day and asked how the kids were because no one wants that. We want to say that he called us the player ever. (laughs) We have our head over the ball. (laughs) So now I'm a coach. My players hate me. (laughs) I remember we played against you when you were coaching Strathmore. And I was like, I'm glad I... I'm glad I play for Buddy Pascoe now because you were going off your nada. I think he's a winner. And I'm like, this bloke over here. Yeah. You had a fake injury because you were on playing with that day, apparently. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we had, a, uh, Heath, we had a bit of a... So I coached Strathmore, so there was myself, Spud, uh, H played there. And then at Pascoe Vale, there was Gav, Rossi, Rossi's brother, who wasn't the North bloke, but he was the best. And then there was Daniel Harris. Uh, yeah, there was a good bit of rivalry between... The two clubs, and I always made sure I wanted to win that bad against them that I'd spray head the hell out of everyone. <laughs> a shocking coach. Oh, no way, I'm a shocking coach. <laughs> hey, no, nah, no, nah, can I just interact, interject? Sorry, you just lean forward. Then are you, you're not wearing another North top under that t shirt, are you? I'll just, I'll just take it back. Are you one of those blokes, Lockie, that signs all your jumpers and frames them and puts them up? Are you one of them? No, I don't put them up, but I've got them. Yeah. Um, in storage for the day that they're worth something and then I'll bloody bring them in. So no, I'll I'll them up more. I don't put them up though. All my important jumpers and I've had two podcasts and I've already used up my two jumpers. So. What do you got on there though? There's blue underneath. And so all I've got left in my whole collection is a warm-up top. <laughs> so, so like, <laughs> this is all So... Is it, am I remember <laughs> I'm, look at, I don't really want to show my rig because, oh, yeah. <laughs> this has got my name on the back. And um, I really bought this because you did your hamstring. <laughs> so it's special to me. I slept, I slept <laughs> right now, so I'll just go out of sight and put this back on. I feel like a 13-year-old boy. Wait there. Look at this. But... Um, that's my only last special item that I, uh, I've got a warm-up top from 2007. How, <laughs> how, how is your rig, Nani? How's your rig? Well, I've never been one to be a bit like Lockie. We, we could do all the work weights in the world, but we just didn't have much definition. Yeah, we're still fit as hell. But well, the two best yeah. runners, though. <laughs> yeah, buddy, I do it. We used to chat around Princess Bart when we had the time trial. Um, no, good. Uh, well, probably no. just enough. I just wrote a couple of notes here. Lock, you were there through the period of the old facility and the new facility, and I think it's even though we're rehashing a lot of the same stories, I think it's great to show the modern day players and the supporters what we got brought up with, and more aware of probably our personalities that we are versus what it was like when you finished. Any, you know, can you remember what the facilities were like, the gym, the equipment when you rolled in compared to to when you finished? Yeah, I think. Um... The gym at Nanagoon where I played um, junior footy was better than the one at Arden Street. It was just like, it was that upstairs one and it was just like, it was, oh, can you say terrible? It was, but uh, we didn't care. We didn't care. All we had to do was push the buddy iron bars or whatever. Um, now you've got the rubber ones or whatever, the good ones and all that stuff and stuff. Yeah. No, back then, yeah, I remember it's the old whiteboard, none of that smart board. I remember, I don't know if you remember. <laughs> remember when we the smart boards came out? I remember how we had like the meeting would start at nine o'clock, so we'd all roll it at nine or eight forty five, whatever, or eight fifty. And we'd all just wait until the coaches walked in. And remember like we brought like, they just brought the smart board in. And then I was like, Oh, watch this. So I got up and drew a big penis on the floor. <laughs> And then I was like, like laughing. We're all laughing now. How funny is the pain? It was so funny. And then I didn't know how to erase it. <laughs> and no one would tell me. And I'm like, I can't erase it. I can't erase it. I can't erase it. And then I was like, they're coming in. I'm like, oh, we're done. <laughs> so I just sat down. And then as soon as, I don't know, probably whoever it was back then, Lapo or whatever, clicked the button and had no, like, just a big front <laughs> thing. And I was just like, and then everyone just got in like, look, and everyone's laughing. I'm just like, I'm just going to deny the hell out of this. No, it wasn't me. But it was me, and I got in trouble for it. But that's what I remember. I was like, because I'm just used to the whiteboard. Draw a 
this on there, rub it off. Yeah. <laughs> you got a smart board. Oh, could not could not understand a word of that. Probably still. Um, well. <laughs> I don't know why I just barely remembered that. I was like, I remember the day I drew that and I was like... I reckon there was another one, like, I'm not sure if this is true, I've forgotten, but there was a night when we all went out and a bit of shit went down as it does and everyone goes into panic control. And so, where you, I think you used to sit in the second or front row with Nari and they said, all right, stand up if you're out. Oh, yes. I'm and remembering you, everything now. That at one o'clock, half the group sat down, two o'clock, the rest is sat down. And you and Nary, was, you and Benny Warren were standing up there proud as punch. Four right. o'clock. What's yeah, knowing, yeah, knowing that we were all still out to like six o'clock. So we we're in the front row, and I'm like, well, we were all out, so I might have been able to turn around. <laughs> Apparently, everyone sat down at one o'clock. So <laughs> and then I think it was like I said, three o'clock, four o'clock, five o'clock, and then Lay just said, sit the down, you two. And I was like, you bastards. Like, <laughs> we just copped the whole thing and I was like, we're all there. It was like a funny, even the older fellows were there. I was like, shit. Just turned around. I was like, I couldn't oh. <laughs> You dogs. I was like, you bloody dogs. Um, hey, Lucky, um, can I ask you, life after footy, we touched on the fact that you're doing your lawn mowing stuff, but you're a father of four as well with crew. Um, yeah. how, how's family life and what kind of dad are you? Um, I'm a cool dad. That's, <laughs> the, that's the thing, Nani. You're, you'd be a cool dad too. But no, nah, dad life is it's hectic at the moment because everyone's in ISA. So they're around all the time. You can probably hear they've got the um, little trikes and stuff running around through the house. So I've got a little truck made out from them. So all four. Of them. You, got four you got four kids now, Lock? Yeah, I got four. I don't want to open that door because it would be shit of a fan, but they'd all be in it. Do this it. Is actually, this is actually the setup for the homeschooling. I don't know if you can see, but. Oh, yeah, cool. Like, Get them on the lawnmower. Teach me a bit about the real world. Yeah, the rider knows how to ride the, um, the rider. I've taught him. Hey, Lucky, you, I want you to open the door. Uh, Let the tribe in. Let them in. Yeah, it's so uh, good luck. No, they probably won't come in yet. I love where you've got that lock at the top of the door. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I, built, uh, I put that in the other day because they were just going crazy. In right, can we please. ask Ryder? Heath, can we ask Ryder if he remembers his dad playing footy or where he played? Who we got Say here, Lock? Say hi. That's Laker. He's the third one. Oh, Laker. And Laker. Oh, hey. Wow, yeah. wait, look at this. Hey, boys. Hey, guys. Can you, all hear boy? Can you remember what team Daddy played for? I'm saying hello. Do you remember me playing footy? Yeah. Was, was it good? Yeah. Was I the best? Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Is he a good dad? Yes. He's the best, isn't he? Yes. Who's over there? Oh, here we go. Oh, he's the boss. Hey, Fru. Oh, no. I have I've even got my VIP. Shirt on. The saying behind every great man to great woman has never ever been more true in this family. <laughs> He's looking like a kid. Like kid. Held us together. Held us together, right? Oh, boy. Yeah, yeah. Lock, yeah. a popular man, Heath. He's gone to nearly every player's wedding. He passed out in a ditch at mine and at, uh, at Scotty Thompson, he passed out under a parked car. So he's got a great. <laughs> He's off ticks and boxes at weddings. So I've ticked a hell of a box. I don't know how he survived ours, to be honest. Yeah. And yeah, what recently, recently married guys. Like, we'll just wrap it up in a sec, but got married at home. What was the setup? Yeah. Yeah, no, just at home. We've got a bit of a, we've got an acre here, so. Um, and a big shed, so. Got everyone here and just uh, decked out the shed so it didn't look like a shed. And uh, Prue put some of her flowers in there. <laughs> <laughs> The wedding, so. Oh my god. Um, and now I have to wear this. Yep. Oh, look at that. Don't do not lose that lucky or your life's not worth living. <laughs> <laughs> hey, well, lucky. Um, we might wrap it up there, man. We want to thank you so much for joining Good us, and it's great to see no, Prue and all the kids are doing really, really well. But um, see ya. Yeah, yeah, great, great, man. That's a really great right. chat, mate. Anyway, okay. gotta go. Bye. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> bye. <laughs>